Hi, and welcome to the material budgeting video in this LMN building your budget video series. Here we're going to look at how to build a material budget based on your sales forecast and how to come up with a pretty accurate forecast of how much materials you're going to need. Your material budget is going to be a lot simpler than your labor or equipment budget. Material costs tend to stay fairly consistent, at least in terms of a proportion of your sales. So it makes forecasting pretty easy. Just remember, as you're building this budget, you are working off a forecast. You're not just going to enter the material costs that you spent last year, unless you're not really changing your sales from last year. If you're forecasting an increase in sales, you're going to probably increase your material budget and vice versa if you're forecasting a decrease in sales. The nice thing about material costs is that they do stay fairly consistent year over year. So for example, if last year I spent 30% of my sales on materials, then when I'm building a forecast for this year, I should probably budget on 30% of my sales on materials. The more work I do, the more materials I'm going to need, and they stay usually fairly similar in ratio. Now, again, the only way that would really be different is unless if I had a maintenance and construction company that decided to stop doing construction work and go all in on maintenance, then what I spent last year on materials is going to go down a lot because maintenance is going to use a lot less materials. But for most companies doing a similar type of work, year over year, your material expenses are going to change, but they'll stay relatively consistent as a percentage of sales. And that's what makes forecasting material budgets fairly simple. The one thing we also want to encourage is just keep your materials budget very simple. In your accounting, you may break your materials down by shrubs, perennials, annuals, pavers, aggregates, and that's all well and good for tracking. As you're buying those things, you know what type they are. Trying to forecast how much you're going to buy of those things is probably way overkill. Remember, we don't know exactly the types of jobs we're going to win. You don't know if you're going to win a lot of patios, a lot of planting, a lot of decks. And these things can change year over year. Or one big job may skyrocket the actual cost of a certain type of material. At the end of the day, it's not even worth breaking it down by that much. Because you're not going to have different overhead recovery types on each type of material anyway. Materials are going to have a consistent overhead recovery factor. So just keep it simple. You could, on one hand, just build a budget for your material total and be done with it. And that'll be good enough. Many of you, to get a more accurate forecast of how much materials, you might want to break it down by, say, division. So if I broke my sales goal down by maintenance and construction, then I'd probably also want to break my materials down by maintenance and construction just to help me forecast how much materials I'm going to need for each. I can look at the sales goal. I can look at our historic spending as a percentage and come up with a good, accurate prediction of how much materials I'm going to need to hit the sales goal. Let's see it in action. I'll show you as, as we work through it. So I'm going to flash over to our equipment budget now. And the first thing I want to draw your attention to is up here. It's called material tax. Now, in most cases, you're not going to need to change that number. You leave it at zero. Most companies' material expenses already include the cost of tax if you pay tax. The only companies that should fill out anything here is if your accounting material totals don't include the cost of a tax. And if that's true, and you can check with your bookkeeper or accountant, then you're going to want to build the tax percentage up here. So if material taxes were 6.5%, I could put them up there at 6.5%. Now, the problem with this, though, is that it will automatically add 6.5% to all our materials. And in many states and in some provinces, tax varies depending on how the material is being used. Sometimes materials are taxable, sometimes they're not, depending on the application. And if that's the type of tax scenario that you have, I'd leave this at zero. And even if your taxes aren't built into your material costs, then just add a line item in here called material taxes and handle it that way. It might not be just as easy as applying a fixed percentage to all. Now let's add our material forecast into our budget here. So over here, I'm going to click the new button and I'm going to say materials construction going by my P&L from last year, spent 214,000 on material costs. Now remember this year, my sales forecast went up. So I'm gonna to need to spend more on materials to hit that sales goal. To keep it in that similar percentage, I'm gonna budget for 270,000 in materials. So all I really did was look at last year and say last year we spent 30% of this, which happens to be about 214,000. This year, I'm gonna forecast 30% of this, the forecast sales for this year. And that works out to 270,000. 
So this is what we spent last year. It was 30% of last year's sales. This is what I spent this year. And it's 30% of this year's sales. If you look up here, you can see the ratios are just about the same, which means I'm doing a good job of predicting my forecast. Last year was this, this year was this. Now, why aren't these saying 30%? Don't forget, in my sales budget, I not only have my construction sales, I also have maintenance. So I'm not finished budgeting yet, but right now, the way I've added it, it's showing me at least a similar ratio, even though I don't have all my materials in there yet. This will go up as I add those maintenance materials. So let's do that. Let's assume last year we spent 10% of our maintenance sales on materials. So a quick check of my sales budget would tell me last year that would have equaled 25,000 in materials. That means this year I should also forecast about 10% of my maintenance sales on materials, which would mean 34,000. So I'm gonna go back to my budget. I'm gonna save this one. And now I'm gonna add materials maintenance. Last year we spent, just to double check here, 25,000, that was 10%. This year, our sales goal is 340. So going back to materials means I need to budget 10%, which is 34,000. Again, you can do a quick check up here to see what I spent last year on materials, what I'm forecasting this year. So actually I'm forecasting to spend slightly more than I did last year as a percentage, which may or may not be accurate, but I do want these two to be relatively close. I'll click save and now they're in there. Going up here, I can look at my material ratio versus the industry average ratio to see if I'm at least in line with where I should be. And it looks based on this and based on this, like I've over forecast my materials by just a little bit. So I could ratchet these down a bit just to try to make it a little more realistic. Now I'm very close to last year and I'm a little bit closer to the industry average. Hit save changes to lock your changes in. Now there's two actions you can take on materials. One is move to overhead. For example, if you accidentally put some materials in here that you don't estimate, then I may want to go move to overhead. A good example of this might be some miscellaneous materials that you might buy. Stuff like garbage bags, string line, paint. These materials are not going to get estimated on jobs. They're too small. The estimators are going to forget about this stuff all the time unless you've got some sort of way of bundling them together and applying those costs to a job. Usually, there's lots of little materials that get bought every year that never actually end up on an estimate. So there should be, in your overhead budget, a line item for consumable materials or small materials or any way you want to call it that. But it's all that small stuff that's too small to get estimated. If you accidentally put a category like that in here, you just go action, move to overhead, and you can push that automatically into your overhead budget. If it's built into one of these totals here, you may want to back those totals off a little bit and put some of that in overhead. Because again, all that small stuff across an entire year, it adds up. But if it's not being estimated, then you're not recovering it. And it belongs then in your overhead expenses. Once you're done with your material budget, just double check that you've saved any changes and you're ready to move on to the next budget, the subcontracting. And as always with the other videos, we're here to help. If you have any questions on budgeting your material expenses, reach out to us at support at goelmn.com or through our live chat to get the answers that will help you get past your problems.